During the recent general conference, there were numerous references to the 75th anniversary of the church welfare program. After a downturn in the economy, one family from California found out firsthand just how important the program truly is. We're the Foot family. We live here in Simi Valley, California. We have three kids right now and one on the way. One of the aspects that I think I love most about my little family is the love that we all share together. We're a close family. When I was younger, I kind of figured out I had a knack for doing murals and doing characters on walls. So I thought, well, I'll take a leap of faith and start my own business. For many years, it was wonderful, but the economy took a turn for the worse and things were getting very tight. And then there was times where the month was coming to an end and we still didn't have all the bills paid. The moment that we actually realized together that we are financially s struggling and we're not gonna make it, his first thought was, what am I gonna do for my family? How am I gonna take care of my family? As a husband, as a father, we all have that desire in our hearts to give all that we can to those that we love. From that standpoint, it's not an easy thing to, to swallow when you feel that you've failed. You feel that uh, the world is crashing around you, especially when you've tried so hard to build something. We are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And we do have a welfare system to help when needed, but the church does teach we do need to look first to ourselves. If we're doing all we can to better our situation, what can our family, our immediate family, do to help? When we saw that we had gone to a family and we had gotten all that we could, we found the need then to make an appointment with the bishop. One of my responsibilities in the ward is to seek out the poor and needy. The Foote family came to me and explained their situation, and as we went through the details of their finances and found out their needs, I was anxious to be able to help. I love Bishop Heim. He is amazing. He, he, I know that he has been called of God. My wife and I would go and uh, counsel with him, and when we didn't feel great about ourselves because of the situation that we were in, we would feel that he was pouring love to us, that he spiritually lifted us. He treated me, uh, I think, just as well as I, I think the Savior would have. One of the resources bishops have to help those that need help is the bishop's storehouse. It's like a grocery store, and when a family has needs, we fill out a food order. The money that would normally go to food can now go to other bills. The church is very unique in that we produce a lot of our own food. We have farms and ranches. Labor is provided by donations of members of the church. And so it's a very low cost, efficient way to help feed the people that are in need. We're here at the Bishop's Storehouse in Silmar, California, one of many in the world. And we grow and can a lot of quality food. We try to give out the best. We have our own milk plant. We make our own butter, cheese, stews, and chili, powdered milk, drink mix, tomato juice, spaghetti sauce, all in canneries done by volunteers. It's all part of the Lord's program, people helping people. The first order that I got, I was thinking, wow, I can't believe the church can provide so much food to families. There's hope there. There's gratefulness. The way that this welfare system that we have in the church works is through the fast offerings from the members of the church. We abstain from eating two meals a month and we contribute the money we would have spent on that food to a fund which the bishops use to provide for those that are in need. It's an offering of love. Are you willing to go hungry for a meal so that someone else can eat? Um, I think most people are willing to do that. On an individual basis, it doesn't seem like much, but if you have a million people do that, it's very powerful. Knowing that this food has been prepared from the donations of your brothers and sisters, and it's been done with love. It's something that I don't take lightly. When people are receiving assistance, we usually ask them to help out in ways that they're able to help out. We'll ask them to help at the Bishop's Storehouse in filling orders. It's a good opportunity for people to do what they can do. I want to uh, step up and get everything taken care of so that I can uh, be a help to someone else uh, that may be coming down the road. The welfare program is not just for members of the church. There are many people that 
are not members of the church that love to contribute and to serve and participate in the farm assignments and the other assignments and there are also those that need help and receive assistance. I know people who are not members of our, our church who have needed help and the church is there to help them. The Savior taught us to lift up the feeble knees, to help those that are in need, to watch over each other and watch out for each other. And so this is fulfilling the mission that he gave to each of us. It has been evident to me and my wife and my family that the welfare system that we have in the, in the church is so inspired and has helped my family and, and will continue to help others. It is there to give comfort and to give assurance that the Lord is there and mindful of us. The church welfare program serves so many. Speaking of service, we'll be back with a way you can help the church, but first, it's time to showcase some of our missionaries serving around the world. If you'd like to share a picture of an elder, sister, or a couple missionary that you know, send it to mormontimes at ksl.com. And the first three missionaries we're about to show you are brothers serving at the same time in the different parts of the world. That's amazing. We'll be right back. Music 